to you today about um, Muammar Gaddafi, who is the uh, dictator and leader of Lebanon. Um, he's referred to, he was referred to by Ronald Reagan as the mad dog of the Middle East during the 80s. Um, when I first started this speech, I thought it was going to be pretty easy to kind of, I was, you know, I figured, I've heard speeches in, in this class about him, and figured, you know, it's a bad guy. And when I first started doing research, I was amazed to find positive comments about him, about how he is the savior of Lebanon, has brought him out of depression, and that, you know, he's uh, referred to now as a good guy. So that kind of draw my attention to this, and so I'm going to try to inform you and persuade you that this, he's really not a good guy. So who is Muammar Gaddafi? Well, he joined the Libyan army in 1965 as an officer, and uh, in 1969 he became the dictator at age 27. Uh, and he has been the lady Libyan leader for the last 41 years and will remain in power as long as he's alive. Um, although over the last few years, Gaddafi has seemed to change his ways and make himself seem like a better guy, he's still the same man who he was when he first took over Lebanon, and he has committed horrible crimes and really needs to be brought to justice. He's committed major crimes against humanity, um, he is notorious for authorizing imprisonment or execution of anyone who questions him or opposes him. If you make a joke in his general against him, you can go to prison and spend the rest of your life there. There is no court system there for people to stand trial for. He uh, is notorious for using uh, torture, rape, and sexual violence to get confessions. So if you can be completely innocent and he will abduct you, he will threaten to he will you know, torture you, if you're a woman he'll rape you, you know, he'll have his guards rape you, or they'll threaten to rape your family until you commit and confess, even though you're innocent of these charges. Um, in 1999, there was an outbreak of the HIV virus in Lebanon. And Libya. Uh, sorry, Libya. And uh, he, uh, they charged six nurses and one doctor stating that they injected the AIDS virus into um, 426 children. Now when they interviewed these nurses and doctors, the doctors and nurses claimed that they were given shots by the government and were told to give them to these children. They had no idea that it was the actual AIDS virus. There are multiple theories on why uh, Qaddafi would have done this. One is that he is a man who seeks glory and so he was using these children as guinea pigs to discover a cure for the AIDS virus. The second theory is that there was an uprising in this particular area, and he used that to eliminate the younger generation, to basically just wipe them out. The treatment of prisoners and the conditions in which they live in are horrible and are very bad. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. These are just some pictures of the way the prisoner is, prisons are, they're overcrowded. You'll have a building that is built to hold about 200 prisoners and it'll hold almost 1,600. There's no clean water, not enough food, no medical care, and they're basically just shoved into these, into these prisons with no, nothing to do. Uh, families can bring food to the prisoners, but they have to leave it at the gates and hope that their person, get, that person their prisoner, gets it. Um, one of the biggest crimes he's ever committed was the Abu uh, Saloum prison massacre in June uh, 29, 29, 1996. Um, and this, what happened was the prisoners rioted because of the conditions of the prison. And for a half a day, they took a couple guards prisoner, then released them. After that, the prisoners were sent back to their, their cells, and at about five o'clock in the morning, they were all summoned into these courtyards. And when they got into these courtyards, at some point, a grenade was thrown into each courtyard, and the guards who were standing above opened fire. They fired for three hours and killed over 200 prisoners. The, uh, they never notified the prisoners' families that there was a death, and even if they did, they didn't know where they buried them. They threw them in trenches, 
And once the trenches got full, they hauled them off to unknown locations. The uh, Libyan government, they never claimed this happened until 13 years later. And even then, they still haven't notified the families of who died or where their body is. This is a, a picture of the massacre. So, he's also notorious and has been notorious for supporting terrorism. He's funded uh, multiple uh, terrorist groups and offered sanctuary. He funded the Black September group, which if you don't know who they are, they were the group that uh, in 1972 invaded Munich and, and killed um, 11 Israeli athletes. And he supported and funded it. They actually got the weapons in through the um, Libya, uh, uh, through the Libyan government. That's how they got the weapons into Munich. Um, he's responsible for numerous terrorist attacks. Um, he was responsible for a burn, uh, bombing in a disco in Berlin, which three uh, three people died and 229 were hurt. Three, two of the uh, people who died were U.S. officers. This was a well-known uh, disco that uh, U.S. servicemen used to f uh, frequently attend. Uh, he's also famous for the uh, bombing of the Lockyer uh, Scott, uh, sorry, Lockerbie airplane that was uh, flying over Scotland that killed 271 people, which included, I, I, I'm not sure, but quite a few American people flying back to America. Um, and then six months later, he bombed a French airliner over Chad, killing 180 people. And these are just some of, of the terrorists that acts that he's supported. And he's also behind a lot of disappearance, uh, kidnappings of anyone who disagrees with him in foreign countries. Um, which here's a protest, picture of a protest that happened when he came to the United States. Um, he's also notorious for repressing the people. Uh, he, when he took over power, he made it an Islamic socialist country, which is basically a communist country. But he published his own green book, which is the laws which the people of Libya have to live by. Um, he, uh, like I said, if you speak or joke against the government, you can be arrested. And if you, oftentimes, if you're arrested and sent to prison, you pretty much it's pretty much a death sentence because you won't. Speak. <coughs> He's banned YouTube and any other sites to speak against the government. And he uh, also called for the death of stray dogs, which is anyone who is Libyan descended who is living outside of Libya, which is pretty amazing. So why the change in recent years? There's several theories. Uh, one is, oh wait, oh wait, yeah. He's condemned September, some condemned terrorist attacks like September 11th. He also turned over uh, several terrorists to the government um, as, as part of it. He also paid restitution to families of, the, of several of the airplane attacks that he was responsible for. Uh, he ended their nuclear and chemical weapon program, and he um, allowed foreign companies to come work in Libya. So why did he change? The fall of the Soviet Union is one theory because he was basically a communist country, but the Soviet Union was the biggest country and he didn't have a strong ally. Um, another reason why is he became broke. The country became broke from funding terrorism and from U.S. and U.N. sanctions. Um, so why is he allowed to be free? The biggest reason is oil. Libya has the second largest uh, deposits of oil in the world, and it's sweet oil, which is cheaper to refine than regular oil. Um, in September of 2003, or September 23rd of 2009, he was in New York to address the U.N., he was allowed 15 minutes to speak, and he spoke for 100 minutes. Uh, in, in this speech, he called for Obama to uh, rule forever, and he said that the Taliban was a peaceful group. He also stated that the swine flu was a government weapon that was developed by government.